Today we'll be taking a look at the simple yet effective lighting trick done in Photoshop, or any of the similar programs. So simple that you don't even need to use a tablet for this one. In fact, that might be for the best, as you'll see in a moment. But before we get into that, we should establish a good source of lighting, one with a clear sense of direction and good clean edges. Refer to my lighting tutorial if you are unsure on how to do that. Since this video is on the effects side, I'm going to gloss over all the SFM parts that I cover in previous videos. Now that we have opened our render in Photoshop, let's get started. Actually, before we get into that, let me point out a fatal error I have seen a lot of SFM artists do when trying to go for this type of style. Some beginners take a soft brush, or any whatever, and trace along the edges. While there are ways of doing this properly, for now, try not to do this, because what I believe these people are doing are thinking of the lights as lines instead of shapes that follow the form. Too complicated? Don't worry, as long as you're prone to making shapes instead of lines when doing this technique, you'll be fine. Alright, jumping right into it, make a new layer. Then take the lasso tool found up here and select the polygon one, the one that's based off of selected points. Then jump right in and trace the key light, or rim light, whatever you're trying to do. Be sure to be doing them in angular patterns, avoid lines whenever you can, and sparingly use the shapes that are like triangles, you know, the ones that thin out. Those usually look kind of weird. Be sure to go all the way to the edges so when we fill in the selected area, it doesn't look weird. Unless that's what the situation calls for. An example of this could be a rounded surface. The color of what you choose is up to you, although in most cases, I'm sure lighter colors would be the optimal choice. But don't worry too much about that, because even when we're done, we can use Control u or any form of the hue slider to change the color to fit our needs. For this particular poster, I played around with force perspectives, so soldiers' feet were originally not in focus. This is a problem because the lasso technique has defined the shape, but that's an easy fix. Since we're on a separate layer, take the blur tool located here and click it a bit. Alright, here comes the fun part, and by that, I mean, be careful. <laughs> it's easy to overdo this one. I'll leave the discretion of what is too much up to you, but keep in mind that you don't want to go too overboard. First, pick a corresponding color for the bloom. I find that bright, saturated colors work for this well. Then take a soft brush, sort of transparent but the specific number doesn't really matter. Then in a new layer, set it to color dodge. Trace over your highlighted effects. When you're done with that, you can play with the opacity to see where your happy place is. Don't forget you can mess around with the hue slider, again, control U, to see what you could have done. It's never too late to change the entire thing. <laughs> now you're technically done now, but there are a few tricks you can do to make it pop more. One is taking a soft brush and adding particle effects, in the same way we just made the previous one, except with an added blur located in the filter section. Another one could be taking another color, for example, blue, brushing it over with another soft brush on all the parts that you missed, and setting it to something like a transparent overlay. But that's even more so a personal preference. Alright, that's just about it. The tricks used in this video can be modified to make entire different types of effects. So just keep that in mind. Hope you guys got something from this, and I'll see you all later.